I'm Steve Crisco with the Frank Langley Company. We're here today to do owner instruction at the BU R&D building on the bell and gasset pumps that were provided to PSNV for installation here. We're going to start here at the bell and gasset 1510 base mounted pump. It's a pump that's widely used throughout the campus. Uh, the basic instruction is we got an electric motor mounted on a frame with a bearing assembly in the pump end. If, uh, so for preventative maintenance, I've listed on the document that's been handed out and uh, will be in the uh, O&M uh, how to uh, maintain the, the grease interval, how much grease and at what intervals to install. It's all documented here. Same with the motor. The motor in, uh, information is on the document. You just match up the bearing from the nameplate provided on the, on the motor nameplate. Find the bearing size in the chart by the amount of grease and the intervals to which to add. In the event that you have to do service, remove the coupling guard, loosen up one coupling half, hub, slide it back on the shaft. You might have to loosen the other hub as well, slide that forward, drop the sleeve out, and you can pull the rotating assembly out of the casing by removing all of the cover, pull, uh, cover plate bolts. If the uh, rotating assembly doesn't pull out by hand, you take two of the bolts, run them into the jacking screws here. I suggest you have two bolts back in uh, at least a couple of threads before you start jacking it out because it might pop out. Uh, you know, we're assuming that you've already isolated and drained the pressure off the system. But you'll want to make sure a couple of bolts are in there in case that thing pops out that it gets caught by the bolts and doesn't fall down onto the uh, onto the base. So the jacking screws are right here, providing the back side of the cover plate, do them equally, uh, and you can jack that assembly out. So once you get that out, you can remove the impeller. There's a cross-sectional view shown in your document, or an exploded view, excuse me, shown in your document, page five. Once you get that whole rotating assembly out, you can remove the impeller, from the shaft by taking the impeller bolt cap screw out of the end. You pull the impeller off by hand. Don't put a puller on it. If for some reason it's stuck and you can't remove it, take the bolts between the bearing assembly and the cover plate out and put the puller on the back side of the cover plate and then pull on that. That will support the impeller and pull it off. It's Probably less important now than it used to be in the past with the bronze impellers, now that they're stainless. But nonetheless, you don't want to damage the impeller uh, for the cost uh, by putting a uh, puller on it. You will not break that cover plate, and if you do, it's a lot less expensive than the uh, impeller. So once you get that impeller off, and uh, if you've had to pull it off by the cover plate, it's real easy now. The seal's already off the shaft because it'll pull the seal right with it. Uh, but behind the impeller is the mechanical seal. You can replace that if for some reason the pump is leaking. More than likely it's the uh, shaft sleeve. Um, inspect the, sh or the sh uh, mechanical seal that's leaking. Inspect the shaft sleeve when you have the seal off. Make sure that that is still in good shape. Is it grooved? Is it worn? Doesn't have uh, ridges in it? Um, but you can replace that at the same time as the seal, all about the same amount of labor. Doesn't cost that much more. Uh, once you get that back assembled and put back together, you reassemble the coupling. That the pump should still be in alignment, but it might be a good idea before you put the coupling guard on, throw a straight edge on there and make sure that the alignment is still in good shape. If for some reason it's out of alignment, then you just go ahead and align the motor shaft to the pump shaft once everything's buttoned up tight on the pump end. If you need help with any uh, alignment issues or repair issues, you just call our office and ask for Mark. Mark can walk you through all of this stuff. He's done hundreds. So, so you get this all back together and you uh, I suggest before you put the coupling guard back on, you turn that pump over by hand, make sure that it's, it's turning free. Uh, if for some reason it's bound up, you might need to get that impeller uh, loosened up from the casing. It only takes a small amount of corrosion in the casing to hold that pump, shaft, uh, pump impeller 
just enough to draw high amps when you try to start and you might trip out. So get that turned over free by hand before we go ahead and, and fire it up. So any questions on the 1510 end suction pump? So we can go over to the uh, EcoCirc XL and cover that. So here we are. This is the Bell & Gossett EcoCirc XL pump. This is a ECM motor with the, with the integral drive and control system built into it. So right on the HMI, the display, we can read here the speed of the pump. We can see what mode it's operating in. We can see what the status is, that there's power to it. What we're reading right here is that its output is 1,445 to 1,460 watts as it keeps changing based on the signal that's being uh, provided by the boiler. So the boiler is telling it what speed to run at with a 0 to 10 or a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. It can take either one. If you press a button on the HMI, it'll tell you because these two brackets are close, close together, we know that the, that the, uh, the HMI is locked right now. We can unlock that by pressing the up button over here. There's an up arrow and the parameter button at the same time. And you hold it until the brackets open up. That indicates that the control is now unlocked and we can cycle through. We have about 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes of time for that display to lock back up on us. So in the meantime, we can scroll through and read different values. In this particular case, the flow rate is in metrics. If we press and hold that parameter button, we can change it over to GPM and read it in a, a little bit friendlier uh, units here. So we can see that we're pumping 225 to 230 gallons a minute we can scroll through. This is the head that the pump is putting out, again in metrics, so we'll press and hold, change it over to US units in feet. So we're pumping uh, 200 plus gallons a minute at almost 20 feet ahead. And these parameters keep changing based on the signal being provided. Scroll through again, we can look at the speed of the pump. This is the parameter that's being uh, directly controlled by the boiler in order to get whatever the boiler wants, whether it be a, a, a fixed flow or a measured delta T across it. But the signal coming from the boiler tells the pump how fast to run. So we could change the mode that this pump operates in to, from constant speed or fixed speed if, if we had changed the original input. So what's controlling this pump can come from a number of signals. Uh, one is none, which is the HMI, which right here we could control how this pump operates. Right now, all we can do is look at what the pump is doing and see different views, but we're not actually changing how the pump runs. So that means that the input is coming from 485, which is an RS-485 cable coming from the boiler providing the signal, the 0 to 10 signal or 4 to 20 milliamp. There's another uh, input that can be changed at the very root uh, menu. Uh, it could be on Wi-Fi. So uh, there, you can have a wireless card inside and you can control it from your phone. But we can't have any of those other inputs, the HMI, the Wi-Fi, because the boiler needs to control the pump. So that's the way it's set up. So we can't change it from this view. If we need to change it later, there's instructions in the manual that I've handed out. Um, the way you access that is when you power down the pump, you wait uh, about a minute, power it up. And while it's powering up, you access the root menu and the instructions are in the book. You have to go in and catch it within five seconds of powering it up. So. Um, we could go through all of that if need be in the future uh, on how to do the root menu changes. We can uh, also on RS-485 you can, rather than having the, the boiler looking at it, we can actually provide uh, a laptop program 
for you to configure the pump to operate in different modes, which obviously don't apply in this particular application, but if you have other applications, we can, we can make this pump run in uh, a temperature mode, so it can, it can run in variable speed to try to maintain a constant temperature. It can run in variable speed to maintain a constant delta T. So maybe we had temperature probes across the boiler, we could just control to that although we don't recommend it because we want the, the boiler to decide how best to maintain delta T. Um, but we could maintain delta T across a coil. We could run in constant uh, pressure mode, which is this top curve on the HMI here. That's constant pressure, not on discharge pressure, but differential pressure across the pump. So it'll operate in constant head, like we were normally seeing on a pump curve. That's why these little emblems look like pump curves. The next curve down is proportional pressure. That would act as if on our traditional variable speed systems where we have a delta P sensor out in the system, our pump would vary in speed to maintain constant delta P at that sensor. What this does is estimates what that delta P looks like out in the system by knowing what the, how the flow rate is changing in the pump and it will change the speed to save the head across it. So proportional head. So a constant head, proportional head, constant speed, and then the last sim symbol here is uh, nighttime setback. So we can run this pump in nighttime setback. What it will do is look at if, if the boiler water is being set back over a 72 hour period, it trends, and it starts to see as water temperature is reset, it'll reset its actual proportional set point accordingly. So, and then when the water warms back up, the pump assumes it's coming out of, night, coming out of nighttime setback and goes back to its original set point. So it's an energy saving device. It might, with a building management system, might be too many variables changing all at the same time. So we rarely see that used when we have a sophisticated BMS installed like a, in a building like this. So it's probably not applicable to this facility, but it's available if you are installing this in a facility without a, a sophisticated BMS. So uh, there are, on the display, if we have an issue, there's something wrong with the pump, we'll flash a code and it'll say E with a number after it. That's an error code. And you can look up all of the error codes in the, in the document that I gave you. Uh, most common are E7 and E10. E7 indicates there's something wrong with the drive. E10 indicates that there's air in the pump, that we're in a, a dry run protection mode. <clears throat> That's the most common one we see, and it's usually after the system has been shut down for a repair or a rework, and we start the pump back up, and we didn't uh, vent the system uh, accordingly. Here we shouldn't have a problem, with the piping on the discharge bending upward shortly afterward, we should be able to get air vented through the pump and out of this leg of pipe very easily. Uh, generally, we only see a problem with long runs of horizontal pipe when we get the nuisance uh, dry run protection lockout. Um, E7, we're probably gonna have to have uh, Mark come over and inspect the pump. If you get an E7, which is a, a drive fault, and we can uh, look at various things and determine what's wrong at that point. But all of the codes are listed in the back of the document. Um, and the document, if you lose it, is available online at, uh, at our uh, Bell & Gossett's website. Uh, there's also the bar scan on the end of the pump. In your smartphone, you can scan it. It'll take you right to the website where all the documents are easily downloaded and accessed. So anyone with a smartphone can look up all of the documents and, and don't need my handout. So um, on that note, are there any other questions regarding the EcoCirc XL? Is the speed reference come in a dedicated port, not through the RS-485? That is correct. So the RS-485 is the communication mode that we're locked into. And I can't tell what the communication lock is right now because we would have to power it down and back up. But when you power it down and back up, you will see it will say, it will say none, it will say Wi-Fi, or it will say 485 on the display. That's telling you the communication mode 
that it's in. And you're right, the speed reference comes in on terminals that are not dedicated to the RS-485. That was my, my, I misspoke. Any other, any other questions? So now we're over here in penthouse pod D where the chilled water system is and you'll see we have more of the B&G 1510 base mounted pumps. This is the condenser water system over here. On the other side of the air handler over to my right is where the chilled water pumps are on the other side of the mechanical room. So the same exact equipment as we had in the other mechanical room, just on a different system. 